Welcome back. You're still watching Net Bank Business Watch. Thank you for tuning in. We're now joined by Bongani Mabuz, the head of Treasury at Net Bank Eswatini. We want to take a look at today's financial markets. A very good afternoon, uh, Bongani. Welcome back again to the program. So let's start off with looking at currencies today. I saw reports that the dollar is, uh, is quite weak today. How is the Lilangini, uh, you know, trading against the, the dollar today? Uh, thank you. Good afternoon, Lulu, and good afternoon to, you, to your viewers. It's a real pleasure to be here. Um, I think that's a good place to start if you look at what's happening in markets, especially from a currency perspective. Yeah. I'd just like to paint a picture of where we were last week and where we are now mm -hmm. and what's been happening since then. Um, we, we saw last week the, the, the rand go to levels as much as about 1858. Um, as, we, as I speak to you now, the, the Langini to, to the dollar is at, at about 18.08. Um, so there's been a significant weakness of the of the dollar against major currencies, um, and we we see the Langeni at 19.905 against the euro, and 23.20 against the the British pound. Um, so it's strengthened quite a bit. Um, we, for instance, we started um, the the session um, mm. um, a week ago at about 18.32, and yesterday we started about um, 20 cents weaker than where we are now. Okay, so just before we get into commodities, um, let's talk about the data, inflation, inflation data that is uh, expected to come out today, um, and also the PPI data that came out yesterday. Yeah, that's correct. So a lot of what what happens, um, what's happening right now from a currencies perspective, from a commodities perspective, as well as from an equities perspective, um, is a result of the PPI data that came out yesterday, and markets sort of pricing in what they're expecting from the CPI data that's expected to come in um, 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 today. Uh -huh. So yesterday we had the, the, the PPI data, which is the producer price index um, in the US come out. It came out um, really um, at cooler than expected, which is signaling to markets that the economy is not as strong or as robust as, as some thought it would be. And it's signaling to markets further that they expect the Federal Reserve to start intervening by cutting interest rates. So the story around interest rates is that um, markets are expecting the Fed to cut interest rates in the next um, Federal Reserve mm -hmm. meeting, which is in September. Uh, markets are expecting more closer to home the South African Reserve Bank to mm -hmm. start cutting interest rates um, in September and in, and in November. Mm -hmm. um, and in Eswatini, um, the markets are sort of expecting interest rate cuts to come in as early as November this year, um, although we may see um, monetary policy changes come in a bit later in Eswatini uh, okay. because, as, as your previous speaker was, was saying, we have a, an interest rate differential of 75 basis points between, mm -hmm. uh, between Eswatini and South Africa. Okay. So moving on to commodities, let's start off with gold prices. I think I saw a report that uh, they recorded highs today. You know, what, what steered uh, the, the, the gold prices being high today? And also yeah, the, just take us through Brent crude oil. No, thanks. Thanks for that. Um, so uh, Brent, so starting with, with gold, um, gold is, is relatively flat, um, down about 0.17%. Um, gold is at near record highs. Um, and it is steady. We've seen gold um, increase um, to, to these high levels. Um, right now what's happening is that investors are really shifting their focus um, and are waiting the CPA data to come in um, because that is going to be indicative of what happens um, from, from, a, from a monetary policy perspective in, in the U.S. and in the world. Um, from a Brent crude perspective, we see Brent crude, crude up about 0.64%, mm -hmm. and it's up after falling about 2% on, on Tuesday. Um, this is after there was an industry report that pointed to a sizable drop in U.S. crude stockpiles in the U.S. And as the market has really let the news of the tensions in the, in, 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 in the Middle East um, sort of simmer. So that, that's really what's driving, um, what's driving prices from a commodities perspective. Okay, so when you look at the international companies uh, and I spoke about equities, what's, what's happening there? What's happening today? No, thanks. And I think that the story is really the same. That yesterday was, was, a, was really a story of the U.S. PPI data. Um, mm -hmm. we, saw, we saw a risk on sentiment start to, start to come in in global equities and in equities closer to home. Um, for instance, we, S&P 500 was up 1.68% um, today with the FITS 100 up about a third of a percent and the JSE All Share Index up, up about half, half a percent. Um, and I think there are notable mentions there 
Um, for instance, in, in the U.S., you had the, the Nasdaq, which was up about 2.4% yesterday. Okay. Um, we had, this was driven mostly by tech stocks. Um, which which really rallied on the on the news of the uh, PPI data. Um, we had Nvidia, which was up about six and a half percent. We had AMD, which was up about three point two percent. And also, interestingly, in the in in we, we had um, Chipotle announced that their CEO is leaving the company mm -hmm. um, and going to join Starbucks as a Starbucks CEO. So Chipotle was up, was down about seven and a half percent, and Starbucks was up about twenty five percent yesterday. So okay. that that's really the story from a, from a, from an equities perspective, and I think the movements today will really depend on 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 the print on, on the CPI print when that news come, comes out. Right. So that's it. Uh, is there any more data that we can expect? Just in less than a minute. Mm -hmm. um, I think the the big focus this week is on the U.S. CPI data because that that points to the strength of the U.S. consumer. So that's coming out today. And more, more interestingly, um, what's also coming out today is we expect Walmart in the U.S. to, to present um, their, their numbers, their financial performance numbers. Mm -hmm. And that is also, as, as the largest retailer in the U.S., um, the performance of Walmart is indicative of, of how, of, of, of how the, the U.S. consumer is faring. So I think the story this week is really about the U.S. consumer okay. um, and, and, and the strength or, or lack thereof. Um, and the news they're in, the data points they're in, are indicative of what you can expect from a monetary policy perspective. All right. Thanks so much, Bongani, uh, for coming through today. And that's it for our financial segment with NetBank this afternoon. We'll go for an ad break. When you come back, we'll show the show with the Spiesel.